camping spot here or something. Almost halfway into the summer and we still haven't even heard what the final drone regulations are. Although this popped up in the news just recently. It says airliner has close call with drone 4,000 feet over Edmonton. WestJet flight came close to extreme disaster, police officer says. A WestJet airliner flying at 4,000 feet near Edmonton International Airport had a quote near miss with a large drone on Tuesday, according to police, prompting an investigation and safety reminders about unmanned vehicles. While usually the blame would be, oh, it's those recreational flyers, for example, you know, people just flying for fun. Read this, it says, the plane was on approach when the pilot spotted the quote pallet-sized drone flying off their left wing, according to the police statement. Someone was acting irresponsibly and could have caused an extreme disaster. According to these reports anyways, the drone was essentially one meter long, like either way you look at it, whether from the sides or the front. Think about that, a palace sized drone that big. <laughs> what are the odds of that being a quote, recreational flyer that just bought something off the shelf and just flew it and they didn't know what they were doing per se. And as a result, of course, they're issuing things like warnings how dangerous this is. It says one of those drones could collide with the cockpit, kill the pilot, and obviously the plane certainly could be put in jeopardy along with the passengers. It's kind of funny reading this. It says WestJet issued a statement on Thursday that painted a less dramatic portrait of the event. Pilots aboard the airline's flight 3362 reported a drone of quote undetermined size approximately 2,000 feet below the left wing upon approach to the airport. Morgan Bell, WestJet advisor for public and media relations said in an email, our flight crew continued their approach without incident or impact to operations as they determined there was no risk to the aircraft, guests or crew. So that was kind of interesting. So am I reading this right? Where with, even though they saw it, it's more like we're reporting it for the sake of reporting it, but there wasn't any big deal about it in general. And then they go on to list things like the recreational drone rules currently, like the interim ones saying, fly no higher than 90 meters above the ground, etc., etc. Basically things that you guys all know. But again, I mean, just read this. The drone was 4,000 feet in the air, which is like what, over one kilometer? They're saying the drone was like at least a meter long. Does this sound like a recreational drone to you? Because to me anyways, this person clearly seems like he knew what he was doing to have a drone that big and everything like that. Like, I don't, it doesn't really matter what you write. People like that are gonna break it regardless. So you should have things in place to punish people like that specifically. Or at the same time, how I guess is being portrayed in the media versus what was said by the actual, I guess, company and pilots. When are we gonna stop necessarily saying, okay, this thing is in the air, so what? Like, what? It was close. Near miss, what's your definition of something dangerous? Because I used the example before, I walk on the sidewalk all the time and there's cars there. Does that count as a quote near miss, like for a pedestrian? Like obviously again, it's not good to fly like that, but there just has to be a little bit more balance as opposed to like this crazy fear mongering, like for the most part anyways, in most examples. Although in a semi-related, I guess, topic in the sense of, I guess, fear mongering a tech or always blaming it, because people often say things like, for example, you know, just with flying things like the drones, they're saying, my goodness, these things, you're disturbing nature and all that stuff. Like you're destroying it, get it away. So this was actually kind of interesting to me. It says, hordes of selfie seekers destroy popular sunflower farm. So apparently there was this farm in Ontario, I believe, where they grew a lot of sunflower. And I guess the owner decided to open it up for the public because he just wanted to share the beauty of it. But because of that, I guess people were going in there taking pictures and selfies, like, you know, destroying everything pretty much. And by destroy, from what I mean, it's basically people, let's just say going off trail here and picking up the flowers, basically you're trampling everything, specifically taking them out to get the perfect shot. And because of that, the person decided to close it down, but people are still, in a sense, I guess, trespassing to get selfies and all that. So it's kind of an interesting, I guess, topic in that sense, because sometimes even for me, like I just capture the scenery, and people would argue, you know, like a regular person, like a lot of people would say they had experience with people saying like, get that thing down, you're destroying the wildlife and so forth. Whereas most people say, no, you just walking here is disturbing like the wildlife and all that, or even like the plants. That's kind of a good example, I thought, where it doesn't matter what tech or whatever the person uses, it really depends on the person, on what they do, like in general, in terms of, I guess, 
farming the area that they go around and stuff like that. Or with examples like this, do we now need laws where no one's allowed to go outside? <laughs> Stay in your house. Only authorized, I guess, what you want to call it. Nature people or something like that are allowed to go outside and walk around fields or whatever. See you guys later.